Josh Gallon. I'm out here with Kyle Shane here. We're uh, slow trolling Lake of Egypt in Illinois. It's February 1st. It's cold outside. It's cold. It's chilly. And uh, catching black crappie. Yeah, black crappie that are moving up on this hot water end of this lake. Uh, water temps, low 40s to, to low 50s. It's a, it's a wide range depending on the wind. But uh, they're schooling up, starting to pre spawn. Pretty good numbers so far. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Here with Kyle Shane here, top largemouth guide in the state. Illinois, get them hogs. Right. Right. Trying to wait for the pole to calm down for a minute. I appreciate it. I, you gotta know I'm on guard after the whole deal with Rodney, though, you know. said on this lake you absolutely have to use your graph. You do. Uh, you know again this lake it, it's not known typically for numbers it's known for, for a little bit better quality better average so there's usually a lot of the lake is void of fish so uh, you know what we did is you know we scanned basically about an hour before we ever really got going and picked out one little area that, that had quite a few fish in it so, so that's where we concentrated. We fished a few 
few spots earlier that had small pockets of fish caught a few there too but uh, definitely this is is the area that i've seen the, the most fish congregated up they're not really holding anything they're just no, kind of no they're, they're there's a little bit of vegetation that some of them are holding out from but but mainly just getting in here the water temps a little bit warmer here than it, than it has been just a couple degrees so uh, that's basically what they're after Kyle runs a single rod holder. Uh, a lot of people now got it as well, and that's to eliminate transfer of motion. Correct? Yep. So when you get that big bite, it doesn't shake all the poles, and you're not trying to find where the fish is. That's not necessarily for everybody. If you're a novice, Maybe you need all the poles shaking and find the bite if you have problems looking at, you know, watching all of them at once. And you've got the adjustability of the individuals. Yeah, they say during a, a term of day, they save us so much time. You know, especially, oh, there you go. Yeah, like I was saying, during a term of time, uh, we're usually fishing pretty, pretty heavy cover, and uh, just to be able to raise your whole spread up and be able to jump back and idle, you know, so you want to fish this spot and idle up 150 foot. Well, with a T-bar, you know, that was a pretty big chore. You know, it's it's hard to get your poles out of the water enough to be able to move, and and if you did try to adjust them, it, you know it. It was probably a 15 minute operation to try to do that. So, uh, <coughs> the amount of time it saves us is, is amazing today, too. Besides, you know, the, the disturbance it cuts down on. A lot of people want to start spider rigging. And I always tell them the, first, the, the most important thing is boat control. If you can control your boat, you can get away with a lot of other mistakes. Yeah. Uh, but. Spider rigging is just essentially putting stationary poles out in front of you, hanging baits, and, and getting a wider spread to, to push through, giving yourself more chances. And it's not cheating, is it? <laughs> I tell you what, I you know a lot of people got their opinions. Uh, you could uh, you could pick a leg, put your poles down, and and, and just start going, and, and I'd say it'd be a long time before you get a bite. I mean, it's it's definitely. You still got to put baits in front of fish, so that don't change whether you got one pole or, or eight poles. Uh, you know, and, and and we're still catching fish generally on the same stuff we'd fish with one pole. Right. Uh, that's one big misconception about slow trolling is, is open water and you know suspended fish. So a lot of times we're putting multiple poles in the thickest, heaviest stuff we can. So that's where your boat control definitely comes in into play, uh, even more so than. than Attacking fish out in open water, so um, it's definitely there's a science to it. It's it's definitely not putting your poles down and, and going and, and loading a boat. It, it don't work that way. So <laughs> we're in Illinois, so it's three poles per man. Uh, so we're running six poles. I'll run 16 footers, which you don't have to run poles that long. But when you fish shallow water like this, it's yeah. You want to be as far away from the boat as possible. And these 16 foot BGJPs are really a lot easier to fish than a 16 foot stiffer rod. Yeah, it is, for sure. Load up like a jig pole, they're not as heavy and they don't tax you. And really, once you're sitting up on top of them, they're not that long. Right. And you get one off the rack in the store and yeah. it looks like a, a pole vault. But yeah. They're a little harder to get used to, but a little practice. 